Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Appreciate you tuning in on a Monday. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Fabulous, fabulous. Excited for my guest. Like we just did this. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's like this. We just it's like we're living in Groundhog Day over and over <laughs> and over. Uh, the guest that I have today, I'm excited to talk to Gigi Stetler is the author of a book called Unstoppable. She was stabbed 21 times Whoa. and lived to tell about it. Whoa. So we've got this book, Unstoppable, uh, that we're going to be chatting about, and I, I'm looking forward to hearing this story. Hey, human blood travels 60,000 miles per day on its journey through the arteries, arterioles, and capillaries back through the veins. 60,000 miles a day. So, you know, you guys say I don't get enough exercise. My blood's getting plenty of exercise. <laughs> I think mine goes further than that because yeah. my blood pressure is so high. Hey, so there you it go. Pumps faster. Probably. Yeah. So I'm an overachiever. And listen in to this. Every aspect of my life. Sure. <laughs> listen to this, Heidi. Scientists have discovered the male Y chromosome repairs itself. Does it now? I bet does. it uses duct tape. <laughs> Would you, she heard me preparing for this. That was my joke. Okay, pretend like you didn't say that. Scientists okay. discovered the male Y chromosome repairs itself, Heidi. Really? Yeah, but it uses duct tape. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was probably funnier when you said it. <laughs> all right, coming up, we've got a lot of fun stuff on this Monday. We'll tell you all about that in a bit. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It's Monday, September the 19th. Are you ready for it? It's... Talk like a pirate day. I, I assumed that's where you were going with Either this. that or I was having a stroke or something. <laughs> <laughs> something going on with this guy on the radio. I don't know what it is. Uh, talk like a pirate day today. So squeeze in a little arg every once in a while and you know maybe tell somebody to walk the plank. I probably won't do that. Oh, you got to do a little bit of that. And it's also respect for the aged day today as well. So I'll be a lot nicer to you today. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> hey, that was you, completely uncalled for. You are older than me, and you stole my joke earlier. So <laughs> <laughs> She's only one year older than me. <laughs> but I'll still have a lot of respect for you today because it's a special day. It's Monday, September the 19th, and we appreciate you tuning in to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Email marketing is affordable and a proven way to grow your business if it's done right. You can stay in contact with your customers to let them know when you have new things to offer. You stay in control the whole time, too. You decide when the messages are sent and you decide what is being said. So you're constantly in control of your business image. You can do this, but don't try it on your own. Team up with one of the biggest names in email marketing, Constant Contact. Sign up for a free trial right now at Radiosavings.com. Sign up now at Radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. It can be tough sometimes to sit still in church. One teenage boy learned just how tough during a prayer meeting. The boy was fidgeting in the back of the pew uh, with the back of the pew in front of him, and his finger got stuck in the pencil hole. Oh, can't even imagine. No. And it didn't just get a little stuck; it got really, really stuck. He tried everything he could think of to get free. He pulled, he tugged, he tried again, Aww. probably even prayed a little bit. After all, he was at a prayer meeting and all. He was careful not to interrupt the service, though. He didn't say a word about his little you know, problem with his finger stuck in the pencil hole to anybody for 45 minutes. In fact, he waited until the service was completely over before saying anything. After that, the churchgoers tried lubricating his finger with cooking oil from the church's kitchen. That didn't work. Aww. This finger was really stuck. Finally... At 8.30 p.m., firefighters were called in to help. After trying everything they could think of, firefighters used a small handsaw to cut out a tiny section of the pew. No harm, said the pastor. A little damage to the pew, maybe, but no harm. Uh, He said, I'm just glad the boy's okay. So can you imagine that? Well, what a sweet little kid just sat through the whole service. It's hard to be mad at him as a pastor when he wouldn't even say anything to disrupt the service. That is really, yeah, it's very nice of him. Now, 8.30 p.m., again, this was at a prayer meeting. It doesn't say what time it started. Hopefully not noon. No, (laughs) I I think it was an evening thing. It was most like, we're just assuming that. But this young man, a teenage boy, so I'm just thinking... Because, you know, look at my fingers. I I got pudgy little fingers. They would never fit in a pencil hole. Mm -hmm. So this kid must be, you know, he must be a thinner kid to be able to fit his fingers in a pencil hole and get them stuck in there. 
A pencil's not that big. And those pencil holes that you see like in a well, pew. Well, it was probably his pinky. I'm assuming. I was, that's the one I was holding up. What, what did you think I was holding up at you, Heidi? <laughs> it what was, was my pinky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't even go there. Anyway, I'm really glad that he was uh, able to get out of there without losing a finger or anything. That would be really, really bad. But you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your Brain on Drugs. Yeah, you can arrest me, but can I finish my beer first? It's happened in Florida at the Panhandle there. They arrested a convenience store shoplifter who demanded to drink a 12-ounce beer that he had stolen before he could be taken into custody. Bay County Sheriff's Office says the man told the deputy that he recently lost his job of 13 years and just wanted to drink a beer. He became combative when deputies would not let him finish the beer. George R., I'm not sure how you say his last name, I'll just skip it, uh, was charged Wednesday with shoplifting, battery, possession of marijuana, not more than 20 grams, and smuggling contraband into a detention facility. So apparently he had all kinds of stuff okay, going on. Okay, so here's the thing. If he could afford the marijuana... Yeah, he could have just bought that beer. Right. Uh, it's a 12-ounce can of beer. That can't cost much. I don't well, know how much. convenience store. <laughs> well, then again, uh, it's still, whatever the amount, it certainly wasn't worth going to jail over, oh, was it? no. Kids, this is what happens when your brain is on drugs. If you're going to steal, take a case. No, don't, don't even, <laughs> don't listen to her. Kids, this is, where's your microphone switch? This is what happens when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Now your moment of duh, showing videos to fish. In fish farms, sounds kind of dumb, but experts say doing this could improve the fish's chance of survival in the wild. (laughs) I'm sorry. I just think this is really funny. Researchers believe they could learn which predators to avoid by watching videos of one of their own being killed. You know, not that this has ever worked with humans. This is a real thing. Researchers suggest highly trained fish could be put in with other fish to teach them how to react to predators. And they say they could put these predators behind a glass screen. The expert fish would show the others how to react. The researchers from Edinburgh University believe that survival training would improve the chances of fish that are released from hatcheries surviving in the wild. Studies, uh, we're both speechless because this sounds like the dumbest thing ever. Studies suggest 5% of the 5 billion hatchery reared salmon released worldwide survived to childhood or to, to, to adulthood. Mr. Brown suggests that a more drastic lesson would be to show them a whole bunch of footage of a predator in action on some sort of waterproof video monitor underneath. This is like taking these fish to school. I've heard of schools of fish. This is so stupid. It's true. This is real. This is really happening. And this guy, Cullen Brown, has the plan. And isn't that the... I mean, God created predators for a reason. They're supposed to feed on Apparently. All I know is... There's probably government studies that went into figuring all this stuff out. Coming up, we're done with our moment of dub, but we have your scoop of the day on the way. The scoop of the day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at bluebunny.com. Now your scoop of the day. Everybody, back away from your Galaxy Note. (laughs) Have you seen the news? I've seen that. Over the weekend, there was a bunch of videos online about this, too. For those of you who have a Galaxy Note 7, I'm sure you've already been told about the recall. U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission recalled the Samsung Galaxy Note. We're Samsung users. That's a Samsung. Oh, I love Samsung. That's not a Galaxy Note. No, mine's a... um, What is it? Galaxy... Galaxy S4 Mini. Yeah. So, so it's an old one. The, <laughs> it needs to be updated. But you know what? It hasn't exploded on you. No, so you got no, that going I've had for it, it which for is nice. years. The announcement follows uh, last week's Consumer Safety Commission's warnings that users should stop using the devices and should turn them off because of the it's a battery fire. Yeah, that's crazy. Samsung announced replacement programs, so all of that stuff is going on right now. So this is the second time that we've had big news about phones 
some are catching fire, others are being inexplicably smashed with hammers. <laughs> oh, wait, that's something completely different. Okay, moving right along. Teen burglar caught snoring under bed. What in the world? A teen burglar decided to take a nap mid-robbery in China. Uh, he took a nap because the people came home, maybe. The homeowner came home and heard snoring and found the teen under the bed. So, I don't know. Apparently, he just took a nap. But why would he have taken a nap? I don't know. When you're At tired, first, I you're thought tired. maybe he took a nap because they came home, but it's when he came home he heard the snoring. I have no clue. From China to Holland, Dutch police have come up with a way to tackle an increasing number of drones in the skies. Uh, here we've set you know FCC and FAA guidelines and regulations and all of that kind of stuff. They they have a much better plan. You know what the Dutch plan is? Shoot them out of the sky? Uh, no. A series of tests that have been organized since early 2015 – the Dutch forces announced really good, this, good uh, results this week. They're allowing eagles to attack the drones. How would you stop an eagle from attacking the drone? I mean, they're just saying they're training the eagles to attach the Oh, attack they're training these them yeah. to. So they've got I trained they eagles. Like, eagles let them do that. No, no. They're, they're making the eagles feel that these things are dangerous. So these little drones, these tiny remote-controlled drones, if they get up anywhere too close to airports or anything, they have eagles that attack them. So there you go. A new study finds some people are taking medication from their pets and using it on themselves or their family members. So if you got a sick puppy and you're taking their medication, I've heard of that. You happening. are a sick puppy. Let me just I've tell you. I've heard of that happening. Don't do that. That's a bad plan. According to a poll, one in four adults have not read a single book in the last year. How many books have you read in the last year? Probably seven. Seven. Um, mm -hmm. I if if you would have asked me this before I got a smartphone, the answer would have been about fifteen or twenty. Now the answer is probably closer to three or four because I don't read nearly as much as I used to before I got a smartphone. We do interviews with, well, you do yeah. the interviews with, with Notice authors. you never hang out with me here, by the way. No, I'm too busy reading their books. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and you've read several of the books that they I said. I have. I yeah. just finished another one by J.A. Jantz. Oh, yeah. That one was excellent. Well, be listening. Yeah. Do we, we already talk to J.A.? I don't know. Anyway, coming up here in a bit, we've got uh, an interview, by the way. We'll be chatting with uh, today uh, the author of a book called Unstoppable. She was stabbed 21 times. Wow. And live to tell us about it. So excited to chat with her. Oh, before we go, one last thing. Speaking of drones, this sounds so ridiculous. But Domino's Pizza in New Zealand, you got to love this idea. They developed a drone prototype that will deliver pizza. Scott Bush, a general manager of Domino's Pizza Enterprises, told CNN in Auckland, we have such massive traffic congestion, it makes sense to take to the airways. A customer who wants drone delivery will get notification on their phone when the drone is near the drone will lower the food on a tether after the customer pushes a button on their smartphone. For those of you who want to know more about this, I actually have a link to this story because I was fascinated by this. And this is happening in New Zealand. It's a good thing it's not happening in Holland or the eagles would eat your pizza. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. John and Heidi. When it comes to politics, quite often you have an opinion, especially for this election. How would you like a platform to let your opinion be heard? PoliticalStorm.com is that platform. It's a website with news from both sides, and you can chime in on any story, and you can add your own stories. You may even be invited to join me on my podcast for a chance to share your opinion, whether we agree or not. Sign up today at PoliticalStorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice as well. PoliticalStorm.com. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. We've got a special guest joining us today. We're going to be talking with Gigi Stetler, and she's the author of a book called Unstoppable, Surviving is Just the Beginning. And what we're going to be talking about is something that, for those of you who've maybe turned on a television and watched the news, or if you pick up a newspaper or read it uh, online, you've probably heard about the case of Brock Turner, and it's just a crazy case. I don't quite understand it. Uh, but we've got uh, a little more information that we're going to be talking about today with Gigi. First of all, let's just say hello to Gigi. How are you? Hi, great. How are you? Very, very good. Now, this case, when it uh, made the news and, and people were reading about this and, and hearing about this or watching it on television, is about a, a, a student who took advantage of another student and then got kind of a little tiny slap on the wrist, and now he's free. And it's just very, I think it's it's a terrible, terrible example of how sometimes our justice system doesn't have a whole lot of justice, does it? No, definitely not. Not in, in this case, is really 
really bizarre. And and this is something that's near and dear to you with the book Unstoppable, Surviving is Just the Beginning. This is something that you have gone through. Tell us a little bit about your story. Well, um, I was stabbed 21 times and left for dead. And I had to fight to make sure that my attacker um, served the maximum sentence. And because I lived and not for any reason that he didn't want to kill me. He did want to kill me, but the difference between first degree attempt, first degree murder and attempted first degree murder was 12 years to life. So just because I didn't die, he, his maximum sentence was 12 years, which is, is just crazy. And, and, but if I, you know, if I, if I wasn't, you know, strong enough to survive, then he would have been, uh, he would have had life in prison. So, and I, I was on the witness protection and, and after the first, I don't know, six or eight months, maybe a year, um, they never contacted me again. So I have no idea if my attacker is out. Isn't that they crazy? They just don't do enough for the victims. They don't do enough for, they, they, there's just, there's no, the, the justice is so strange. And people get put in prison for such smaller things. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Martha Stewart went to jail Martha longer. Stewart, yeah. Martha Stewart was just going to say, Martha Stewart more time than this guy. Not that I'm trying to throw Martha under the bus. I think she seems like a sweetheart. And I'm not trying to say that what she did was right. But again, it's certainly on a completely different level than this. This man stabbed you 21 times. He tried to kill you. He didn't succeed in that, but he certainly tried to. And first of all, I got to say, I'm glad that he didn't succeed. I'm glad that you're still with us. And thank you for doing what you're doing for other people that are in this situation. Uh, Maybe right now with people that are heading back to college or heading off to college, and there's probably a lot of young ladies and and young men that are going to school for the first time uh, either this week or last week or they're just just heading off. What kind of advice do you give people uh, after you've been through something like this? You know, it's really something right now with, with you know, with young kids. I, I You know, it's obviously it, it starts from home. And I think what happens is, you know, these, a lot of these kids live very sheltered lives and, and uh, parents, you know, on top of them. So when they finally get free, uh, they go binge drinking and partying. And we all know that's going to happen. And my biggest advice is, is you know, we know it's going to happen. We know you're going to go out and have a good time and stuff. But you have to have a pack. You can't go out alone. Girls, you know, girls need to stick together. And, and I mean, there's, it, the girl, you know, I mean, you know, for the guy to, to, you know, first off, to have sex with an unconscious woman behind a dumpster is, is unbelievable. Yeah, so, that's but, terrible. You know, but, the, but for the girl, you know, and everyone always wants to blame the victim, you know, that, oh, she was too drunk. Okay, so that's going to happen, but... The only thing that I blame is, is, I'm not sure of the entire situation if she was out with friends, but if she was out with friends, shame on her friends for, for you know, allowing that to happen. And, and, and girls need to stick together, and they shouldn't go alone. There should always be one designated person at all times to be responsible, a responsible party, because you can't not be drunk. I mean, it's going to happen. You, so that, so if, if that happens, you've got to, you know, you've got to make a pack when you go out there's going to be somebody in charge. You know, someone's going to be responsible and and make sure that if you go out with five girls, that five girls get home. And for those of you that are just tuning in, maybe wonder what the heck we're talking about here. Uh, we've we've got Gigi on the line here. Uh, Gigi Stetler is the author of Unstoppable, Surviving is Just the Beginning. And we're discussing today the Brock Turner case. He's a former Stanford University student who sexually assaulted an unconscious woman behind a dumpster and he's free now. He's out walking free. He only spent six months in jail. This is the craziest thing ever. And there are many people who... Three months. Three months. So, yeah, well, he was sentenced up to six months, but he only had to serve three. That's right. Uh, and, and many people look at this case, and they're so confused as to what happened, the injustice in this portion of the justice system. And there's nothing that we can do to fix that as people. But what we can do is say, let's try to avoid the situation and uh, one of the things that, that I was looking at here in the information is you consider yourself a survivor, not a victim, and there's a big difference between the two. Explain why that is. Well, I actually consider myself as a warrior, not a victim, but <laughs> more than a survivor, I'm a warrior. Um, I, I mean, you can't go, if you go through life um, saying, poor me, look at all these things that happened to me, it's only going to drag you down and no one really cares. So I greet life as a warrior. And, you know, I take every situation and everything that's happened to me, I just, I, I brush it off and kind of put it into a box and, and march forward and, and move on to the next, 
next pass. But if you let it defeat you, then you're you're pretty much done, finished. And the way I look at life, I've been stabbed 21 times and left for dead. Every day above ground is a great day. Yeah. So whatever you bring at me, I'm just I'm gonna deal with it and move forward and. And never take your eye off the goal. That's whatever the ball is, don't take your eye off it. Well, I can tell you, once again, so sorry to hear that you went through what you went through. And I remember sitting at church one time, and the, the pastor was talking about the things that we go through, you know, because there's some horrific things that people go through. And and you sit there and think, you know, why does this happen? Why does this kind of stuff happen to good people? And And he had such a good point that he made. He said, you know, sometimes these things happen so we can help other people and you know we we can relate to them and we can talk to them in ways that, that that somebody who has never had any problems in their life certainly wouldn't be able to relate to so i love the fact that even though something terrible happened in your life you took that you used that you created a book you're doing what you're doing to help increase the awareness for people so hopefully they can avoid this altogether but if they can't avoid it if it's something that does happen to them uh, hopefully they'll take the path that you've taken and and instead of being a victim being a survivor, or I like what you said, being a warrior, because uh, that's that's a much better way to live. Oh, absolutely. Much more fun. <laughs> the book, Unstoppable, Surviving is Just the Beginning. Where can we find a copy of this? Uh, you can go to my website, to the number 2, be com, or you can go to Amazon, but if you buy it off my website, I'll sign it. Oh, nice. Uh, so it's to be unstoppable, and it's the number 2, then be com. Yep. All right. Well, I'll throw a link to that on our Facebook page to make it easy. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. You're very welcome. Have a great day. You do the same. Again, Gigi Stetler, she's the author of Unstoppable, Surviving is Just the Beginning. It's available right now, and we have a link to that at facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This is the world's first and only seven-time lottery game grand prize winner. Since I endorsed Lottolicious, I have won something every single draw. When you join, you'll be giving them the set of numbers that you want them to play, and that's what they will play for you. You don't have to worry about running to the store to buy your tickets. They take care of all that. So if you're looking for the best way to play the lottery, go to RadioLottoPool.com and join today. Again, that's RadioLottoPool.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Israel is one fourth the size of the state of Missouri. Never really? really thought about that, but it's you know when it, when you look at the countries in Europe, well, it's, it's hard crazy to tell. When you look at all a lot of countries compared to just one yeah. of our states, one it's pretty fourth cool. the size of the state of Missouri. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The slang word "cool" comes back uh, goes back all the way to 1825. So back in 1825, that's when they started saying, "Oh, that's really cool." That's cool. really cool. <laughs> hey, speaking of slang uh, and words, do you know what the word barf means in the Persian language? I have no idea. Snow. Really? Yeah. Barf means snow. I want to <laughs> build a barf, man. No, it doesn't work. Fun fact for you, Heidi. Only 15% of people past the age of 18 get converted to Christianity. So if you're not a Christian by the time you're 18, chances are uh, way against you of you becoming a Christian. Uh, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? One U.S. gallon of pure water is about eight pounds. It's 8.345 pounds. And our final fun fact, centuries ago in India, a person could get their nose chopped off for breaking the law. Yikes. Yeah, that would be bad. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. John and Heidi. Email marketing is affordable and a proven way to grow your business if it's done right. You can stay in contact with your customers to let them know when you have new things to offer. You stay in control the whole time, too. You decide when the messages are sent and you decide what is being said. So you're constantly in control of your business image. You can do this, but don't try it on your own. Team up with one of the biggest names in email marketing, Constant Contact. Sign up for a free trial right now at Radiosavings.com. Sign up now at Radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. Coupon clippers. Americans are being more and more concerned about the cost of living and the economy, and they're looking for ways to save and get the most bang for their buck. Well, this month happens to be National Coupon Month. Heidi? I like coupon. Do you like the word coupon or coupon? Coupon. Or coupon. How do you say it? I say, I probably say coupon. Yeah, I've heard it word said a bunch of different ways, but... 
This is the month to celebrate. We're the only ones that say coupon. I say that, we no. We do it just to drive our kids crazy. I've heard other people say it. I've that's, never heard it said I, other oh, that's than why in I our say house. It. Yeah, coupon. Well, I got a coupon for that. I was like, a coupon? What the heck is it? I worked at a grocery store. I've no, heard it all I kinds of I only say things. it just because it drives our son nuts. Yeah. Anyway, research You told from, me the other day if I didn't quit saying coupon, he was going to stab me. <laughs> Did he really? Yes. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, kids. You got to love them. <laughs> I don't think he would really stab you. Promotion Marketing Association and the Coupon Council. They say many consumers are taking advantage of savings opportunities. 89% of the overall population uses coupons when shopping. Coupon users have an average of 7% of their grocery bill paid for by coupons. That's pretty cool. 7%. Consumers who spend 20 minutes per week clipping and organizing their coupons save about $1,000 a year. That's some real money. Typical family saves between $5.20 and $9.60 per week. That's still, that's pretty decent. That's, you know. I really should do more with coupons. I just don't. About $2.6 billion is saved each year uh, from people who use manufacturer coupons. And more than $350 billion in coupons are offered annually. So $350 billion are offered and only $2.6 billion actually get used. Mm -hmm. We need to use more coupons. (laughs) <laughs> so, all right, get out there and use it, whether you call them coupons, coupons, or coupons. Today is the day, and this is the month to celebrate, since it is National Coupon Month. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Let's talk business. If you're in business, you need a website. Come on, it's 2016. Do you really think the internet thing is not going to catch on? Many business owners that don't have a website think it's just too expensive. Well, now it's not. You can actually build a website set up for less than $30 a month. If you need help designing it or just laying something out, we're here to help you. Get a free trial right now at radiosavings.com. You can actually build the site and see it online for free during this trial. So why not check it out at radiosavings.com. A man from the New York City area was arrested after his party of nine failed to leave an 18% tip, the restaurant's mandatory gratuity for parties of six or more. It was added to his bill. Humberto Taveras was arrested for not producing the $13.73 tip. That's how much the amount was. It's not really worth it, is no. it? No. Uh, seven, $77.43 was the total bill. Sopranos Italian and American Grill. He faces a misdemeanor charge of theft of services if convicted, could serve up to a year in jail. Joe Soprano, who owns the restaurant, said that he did not intend to have him arrested when they filed the complaint. He was just saying, hey, that wasn't right. The the tip is there to take care of these people who served you. They did everything they could to make you guys happy. I don't like the idea of a mandatory tip. That's what I was just going to say. Here's what I will say about that. But I leave tips. Because if they know... Yeah, I leave I leave tips too. We do, but my tips vary depending yeah. on the type of service that I've I never got. been a fan of the whole mandatory thing. Me I, either that makes me so. I angry. do understand why they're there because I've I've been schooled on that. I definitely understand why they're there, but I, I don't know. I don't know what to think. On I that. don't understand why they're there. I think that's wrong. Well, uh, anyway, coming up in a bit, we're going to talk about a prisoner who sued the prison because of the food. <laughs> it's on the way. John and Heidi. Have you ever gone somewhere and had food and you're going, I just don't really like this food. It's this is probably not my yeah. favorite place. I'm not coming back. Well, what if you had to come back? What if you were, I don't know, a prisoner and that was the food that you had to eat every single day? Well, you're being punished. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, a Hong Kong court has thrown out an appeal by Good. a Chinese man to cut his prison term short because he doesn't like yeah. the food. Sorry. No. Law Kawalfi told, I'm sure I didn't get any of that right, told the court last Tuesday that he had a hard time adjusting to life in prison because dishes from his native Hunan province are not available there. Poor baby. He said, I am a native of Hunan and I like spicy food and there is no spicy food here, end quote. The quote should go on, but it doesn't. It should go on and say, maybe I shouldn't have broken the law and gotten thrown in prison. Right. But he didn't say that. If you want to eat what you enjoy, if you want to eat your favorite things, don't get yourself arrested. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take your advice. I love that idea. I'm going to obey the law, and then I can eat whatever I want to eat. And then I'll just complain about, you know, being overweight and all that stuff. <laughs> so. Coming up, we're going to talk about chocolate that's on the way. John and Heidi. When it comes to politics, quite often you have an opinion, especially for this election. How would you like a platform to let your opinion be heard? PoliticalStorm.com is that platform. It's a website with news from both sides, and you can chime in on any story 
and you can add your own stories. You may even be invited to join me on my podcast for a chance to share your opinion whether we agree or not. Sign up today at politicalstorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice as well. Politicalstorm.com. John and Heidi. Have you noticed that I kind of have like three or four topics that I really like to talk about? Yes. Chocolate, we talk about quite often. Coffee. Coffee, we talk about quite often. And exercise, we talk about quite often. Now, I'm a fan of chocolate. I'm a fan of coffee. I'm always looking for stories that say I don't need to exercise. (laughs) (laughs) Well, for many of us, the ever-present temptation to reach for the chocolate becomes nearly impossible to resist if we're stressed out. The combination of deadly pressure and easily available sweets can easily sink your weight management plans for the day or week or month or year. Newly published research suggests this dynamic can be circumvented with a little bit of folk wisdom. It says, if you sense your craving is about to be triggered, take a short walk, a short, brisk walk. According to the Huffington Post, research team at the University of Innsbruck in Austria report that a 15-minute walk reduces the urge for a sugary snack, even in people who are overweight, under pressure, and literally have candy available at the tips of their fingers. I've got a link to this story online. You can read it. Here's my thing. Next time I'm feeling stressed, I'm going to go for a walk to the store to get some candy. (laughs) You think that would work? Probably. Probably would work, but I don't think that would probably fit into this category. Coming up, we've got some good news. That is on the way on The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This portion of The John and Heidi Show is brought to you by The John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying The John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. Always try to wrap things up around here with some good news, and I think this is really neat. With a single photo posted to Facebook and a little GoFundMe page, a Good Samaritan was able to raise about $150,000 for Fadicio Sanchez, an 80 year old, uh, 89-year-old man who sells popsicles from a little cart in a little village in a neighborhood in Chicago. While driving through the area, Joel Cervantes Macias saw Sanchez struggling to push his cart, and he posted a photo and uh, put up a GoFundMe page, hoping to raise $3,000 to help brighten this family's day. Instead, the page raised over $100,000 in the first day, and then it was up to $150,000, and now it's over $300,000. That's insane. You can check out the GoFundMe page and see the entire story on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash John and Heidi show. I think that's really neat. This guy doesn't even know the fella. He just thought, wow, this guy's 89 and he's out here struggling to make a living selling popsicles so he can actually survive. Yeah. I think it's cool that this guy is still doing something at age 89 and saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to work for myself. I'm going to. So it's neat that they they found each other. Here's one of the things that I would say. The $300,000 that has come in, does it all have to go to one guy? Because think of how many other people they could right. help with that. Right. So I don't know exactly know how that's going to work out. But again, uh, but it sounds the like... people who donated their money wanted it to go to that man, I, so yeah. it should go to him. And I just think it's really neat that this happened, and it would be really cool if it does go to him, if he would say, you know what, I'm not the only one in need. Right, I want to help others forward. too. Yep. So that'd be really cool. Anyway, whole story on our Facebook page. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great Monday. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show.